Hello all and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm gonna show you the performance difference between 5600, 6000 and 6400 memory speed on a 7800X3D chip. This is gonna to make it easier for people who are not sure about which memory speed to pair with the 3D vCached CPU. So let's begin. The memory I'm going to use for testing is from Corsair. It has the XMP profile with cache latency of 32 and a top speed of 6400 at 1.4 volts. This kit is low profile, which means it can easily be paired with most air coolers and it doesn't have RGB. And these are the speeds with the memory times that I used in the benchmarks. I activated the XMP profile and only changed the speed. For the 6400 speed, the FCLK is set to 2133, opposed from the 2000 used for the 5600 and 6000 speeds. Now, let's check The Last of Us Part 1. When looking at the results, the 6400 and the 6000 speeds are tied with an average of 127 frames and a 1% low of around 110, while the 5600 speed has an average of 125.8 with a 1% low of 107.7. This game seems to benefit a bit when having memory speeds of 6000 or above. Let's move to another game, Guardians of the Galaxy, but this time using a lower rendering resolution with max settings. When checking the results, the averages are more or less the same for all three speeds, with the 1% loads for the 5600 and 6000 hovering around 127 frames, while the 6400 enjoys a comfortable lead with 149 frames. This game seems to benefit from higher Infinity Fabric clock. Don't forget for the 6400 I'm using Infinity Fabric clock at 2133. Low internet resolution may bring up the performance difference as well. Let's move to another game. Spider-Man Remastered. These are the settings used to do the testing and this is the area where I start my benchmark run. I'm web swinging from this area near fixed tower to a rooftop far away. Now looking at the results we can see that this game benefits from higher memory clock paired with the higher infinity fabric speed. The 6400 speed delivers an average of 119.2 with 1% lows around 78.2 with the other speeds basically tied having averages of 115 frames and 1% loads of 75. In this game, higher memory speeds deliver better frames on Intel CPUs as well, at least this is what other benchmarks on YouTube showed. Lowering the graphics quality may emphasize the difference even more. When it comes to Metro Exodus, when setting shading rate to 4 times with max graphics settings, the performance hit is huge. It pushes the GPU to its power limit, thus lowering the GPU's clock. This setting can be set only in game. Now have a look at the power usage and the frame rates. It's a bit more demanding than Cyberpunk with overdrive enabled. When checking the results, all three speeds are basically tied with averages of 35 frames per second and 1% low sitting around 26. This game, using max settings, doesn't benefit from the higher speed with increased infinity fabric clocks. Lowering the settings may bring a small benefit, but when setting shading rate to one time, I didn't see any difference between the speeds. The next game benchmark is Resident Evil 4 and the results are a bit influenced from the starters that may occur when opening the gate. Looking at the results, all three speeds tested hover around 160 frames per second when it comes to the averages with the 5600 1% lows a bit worse with the frame rate just shy of 127 while the 6000 and 6400 speeds delivered around 133 frames. This setup delivers good frames regardless of the memory and infinity fabric clocks. I hadn't played too much to see which memory speed has less stutters but all exhibit a bit. When it comes to the next game, Hogwarts Legacy, I changed the area where I'm doing the benchmark. Now I'm checking inside the castle, the same area where I checked the VRAM memory location. The results are skewed a bit by stutters. This can be observed when looking at the 1% lows difference. I can tell you for sure that the 5600 speed was the most stuttery with the 6400 having the least. The 6400 speed delivered averages of a bit more than 73 frames with 1% lows hovering around 31, while the averages for the other two 
speeds are tied at 71, but the 1% lows difference is substantial, from 28 frames using the 5600 speed to 33 frames for the 6000. Now, when looking at the internal benchmark run results for the Callisto protocol, there is no difference whatsoever between the free speed when it comes to the average frames at least hovering around 93 frames. What is a bit peculiar is that the lower memory speed delivered better 1% lows at 44.5, while the 6400 speed using an Infinity Fabric clock of 2133 had 42.4 frames. Dead Island 2 was a bit harder to test as it was spawning different number of zombies in the area that I was testing. Testing. This game benefits from high speed memory kits. The 6400 speed had an average of 188 with 1% lows of 135.7. The 6000 had averages of 175 with 124 1% lows and the 5500 had 169.1 with 118. Looking at the internal benchmark runs results for Civilization 6, there is no difference between the three memory speeds tested, all having around 325 frames per second averages with 1% lows of 215. I was expecting to see a minor performance difference between these speeds as on the 7700X but was proven wrong. The following game that I checked is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Moving from 5600 with Infinity Fabric set to 2000 to 6400 with Infinity Fabric set to 2133 delivers a small performance boost. The 6400 speed delivers averages of 96.1 with 1% lows of a bit above 50 frames, while the 56 speed delivers 91.3 averages with 45.3 1% lows. The 6000 speed basically is tied with the 5600 when looking at the averages but has better 1% lows with the values just shy of 48. The last game that I checked is the Plague Stale Requiem. When checking the results, all three speeds are tied when it comes to the averages at 92 frames, with 1% lows of 69.6 for the 5600, 71.1 for the 6000 and 73.2 for the 6400. The higher the speed, the better the 1% lows. In this game, higher infinity fabric speed doesn't seem to add too much value. As I gone through the results for each game, let's check the average frames across all 11 games. Looking at the results seems to show that the CPU benefits from higher speed Infinity Fabric. The average for the 6400 speed was 137 frames with 1% lows of 95.6. The 6000 speed is closer in overall results to the 5600 as I used the same Infinity Fabric. The overall averages for the 1% lows for the 6000 speed is at 91.4 while the 5600 speed had 89.5. Frames gained only from higher memory clock. But what will happen if we tweak a bit the primary memory timings? Let's find out. These are the timings I used to check the results for 6000, 6200 and 6400 C30. I checked in a few high frame rate games to see if there will be a small performance bump. Now let's check the results. I want to point out that the 6400 C30 tweak speed using a 2133 infinity clock speed was stable during testing but crashed once in Warzone after 2 hour play. The voltage was set at 1.45 more of it may be needed to make it stable as below this value I experienced a few crashes during testing. Looking at Guardians of the Galaxy, maxed out at 1440p, no upscaling, the results are more or less the same, only the 6000 speed had a more than a 3 frame performance difference. In The Last of Us Part 1, the averages are close, as well as the 1% lows, with a 2 frame gap between 6400 and 6000. When looking at the previous results, the average frames have increased a bit. This means that the game benefits from tweaked memories. Granted, a 2.5% performance increase is nothing that can be been noticed, but there is one. To me, the 6200 C30 speed looks the best. The memory kit doesn't require high voltages, as these settings work with 1.4 volts. When look at Resident Evil 4, the 6000 C30 speed has the lowest performance, but only by a bit more than 1%. When comparing with the previous results, there is no difference. All the 1% lows are skewed a bit by the status that may happen when opening the gate. Now, let's move on to Civilization 6. All tweak speeds perform the same. The 1% lows are around 219 frames and 
When comparing with the first results, the untweaked ones, there is a small performance increase of around 2%. I was expecting to see a bigger improvement. Now let's look at some other games. Some viewer requested to see if I could check Spider-Man and see if it performs better with C30 instead of C36. As it can be seen on the screen, the game has a small performance increase when moving from C36 to C30 untweaked, but the tweaked 6200 C30 speed performed the best here, enjoying a small performance lead. This game being from high speed memories. If the CPU can handle it, as the memory control is on the CPU, then that will be the best choice. If that high speed can be tweaked as well, there will be another performance increase. Checking another combination in Hogwarts Legacy, the tweaked memories deliver a marginal better performance than the untweaked ones. So the lower speed C30 6000 tweaked memory performs better than the 6200 C32 untweaked memory. At least in this game, it seems that this game benefits more from better better timings than memory speeds. If the CPU can handle 6400 speeds with tuned timings, this will perform the best, but again it will be a 2 or 3% performance increase, nothing special. But most important is the price. Now 32GB at 6000C32 is around 114 euros and I think this is the best value. Tweak it a bit and there is no more performance to be gained if going with a higher speed memory. Also by going with a higher speed kit, this will not guarantee that the memory controller can reach that speed and if it can, you may not be able to tweak it that much. I hope this video helped anyone who was wondering what memory speed to choose for a 7800X3D chip or the ones who were thinking to upgrade their memory to gain more, more performance by going with a higher speed kit. 6000 is still the sweet spot. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as it will help me a lot.